my name is Jen and I'm going to teach you from this week's Torah portion. But first, let me explain to you what that really is. The first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, are called the Torah. These five books, the Torah, have been divided up into smaller chunks called portions. It's divided up into these portions so that in one year it is possible to read and study everything in all of those books. This is not a new thing. It's something the Jewish people have done for a very long time. In fact, Jesus, he was a Jew and he studied the Torah. And each week he would go to the synagogue and read and discuss with God's people from the portion of the Torah for that week. This week, it is week 50 of the Torah portion. So we only have a couple of weeks left until we start studying again from the beginning of the Torah. The name of this week's Torah portion is called Kitavol. Kitavol is Hebrew for when you come. That's the first words that Moses speaks to the people of Israel in this portion, which is Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse one to chapter 29, verse eight. So in this portion, Moses has already been told by God that he won't be going into the promised land. The Israelites are about to go in and take possession of the land. So Moses begins to tell them, when you enter the land and you settle there and you cultivate the land, you are to bring the first ripened fruit to the temple to show your thankfulness to God. Then Moses talks about giving a 10% of all their produce to the Levites. The Levites are the people who were especially set aside to do the work of God for the temple. And they were to also give to the poor. Then in this portion, Moses goes on to talk about the blessings and curses. The blessings are the reward guaranteed when the Israelites follow the laws of the Torah. Then Moses warns them of the curses, illness, famine, poverty and exile if they don't obey God's commandments. There were already people in this land that God was giving to the Israelites. But God didn't want them to follow the culture of these people at all. They were idol worshippers, so God was very clear to the Israelites about this new land. He told them through Moses, when you come to the land, this is how I want you to behave. It was God's ways. It was God's culture. Now, no one can earn salvation through obeying these commands of the Torah because anyone who breaks even one command comes under the curse of the Torah. But we trust in the Messiah, Jesus. Jesus was cursed for us. He was cursed for our sin and sin is disobedience of the Torah. Jesus, who was sinless, died instead of us and took the curse on himself instead of us. We have Jesus's righteousness stamped on us, but that doesn't mean that the Torah is cancelled. That doesn't mean that we can behave however we choose. Through Jesus, we've been grafted into God's family, the chosen people of God. So we need to understand what we've been grafted into. God has already set the standards. It's called his Torah. In Romans chapter three, verse 31, Paul says, does this mean because we trust in Jesus that the Torah is done away with? And then he says, heaven forbid, absolutely not. On the contrary, we confirm the Torah. So. We can see that the Torah is relevant for us today. We obey his commandments because we love him and because we love people. And we wanna be like Jesus, who is our pattern to follow. In John 14 verse 15, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. In 1 John chapter two, verses three to 10, it says the way we can be sure we know Jesus is if we are obeying his commands. Anyone who says, I know him, but isn't obeying his commands, 
is a liar and the truth is not in him. But if someone keeps doing what God says, then truly love for God has been brought to its goal in this person. <laughs> this is how we know and can be sure that we are united with him. A person who claims to be continuing in union with God ought to conduct his life the way Jesus did. When God is your king and you love his commands, God's presence is with you. Everything works. It's blessed. David says, goodness will follow me all the days of my life. And James says in James 1 verse 25, a man who studies the Torah and obeys its teaching will be blessed in all he does. So here's my challenge to you. Are you obeying the word of God? Following the pattern of Jesus' life? God's word, his Torah, the first five books of the Bible are trustworthy, powerful, and if you follow it, you will be blessed. The Torah promises both blessings and curses for those who obey or disobey God's instructions. I'm going to read to you from Deuteronomy 28. If you listen closely to what the Lord your God says, observing and obeying all his instructions which I am giving you today. The Lord your God will raise you high above all the nations of the earth and all the following blessings will be yours in abundance if you do what the Lord your God says. A blessing on you in the city, a blessing on you in the countryside, a blessing on the fruit of your body, the fruit of your land and the fruit of your livestock the young of your cattle and flocks, a blessing on your grain basket and kneading bowl, a blessing on you when you go out and a blessing on you when you come back in. The Lord your God will cause your enemies attacking you to be defeated before you. They will advance on you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord your God will order a blessing to be with you in your barns and in everything you undertake. He will bless you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a people separated out for himself as he has sworn to you. If you will observe the instructions of the Lord your God and follow his ways, then all the peoples of the earth will see that the Lord's name, his presence is with you so that they will be afraid of you. The Lord will give you great abundance of good things of the fruit of your body, the fruit of your livestock, and the fruit of your land, in the land the Lord swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open up for you his good treasure, the sky to give your land its rain at the right seasons, and to bless everything you undertake. You will lend to many nations and not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you will be only above never below, if you listen to, observe, and obey the instructions of the Lord your God, and not turn away from any of the words I am ordering you today, neither to the right nor to the left, to follow after other gods and serve them. I want to focus on God's blessing. Blessing is God's favour and protection. So, Today we're going to cook something a little bit exciting, especially for kids. My kids love science and I think especially the experiments that explode. I'm hopefully not going to explode anything today. I want to make something that expands, increases and overflows. So you get the picture. It's honeycomb. It's really simple. You only need three ingredients. Honey or golden syrup. Honey sometimes burns a bit quickly, so I'm going to use golden syrup, sugar, and bicarb of soda. Growing? Yeah. It is. It's still growing. What's happening? 
it's like kind of popping up. <laughs> Here we have the honeycomb that Chloe's created. It was almost overflowing in the pot, which is very exciting. I'm going to set this aside to cool for a few moments, and when it's set, it'll crumble it all up. So you can see my honeycomb is looking set, nice and hard. It's still got that beautiful glossy sheen to it, but I think you can crack it apart now. It's apart. Ooh. Ooh. honeycomb that almost overflowed like a crazy science experiment in the pot didn't explode which was a good thing and is very crunchy and chewy at the same time is it good Chloe yeah <laughs> and we might crush it up and put it on ice cream and banana splits for our Shabbat dinner tonight 